So fostering a sense of belonging. So as an inclusive leader, it is also important for me to to think about how do I get people what they need? How do I get them what they need um, so that they can bring their full selves or their best selves to work? So when we think about this idea of creating this sense of belonging, creating a sense of um, creating an inclusive environment where respect, acceptance, and fairness are held as the highest values. In this environment, people can bring their full and best selves to work. And so that, that's what we're after, right? And so when you think about this, um, the, the, this picture of these ducks, so you have those, the, uh, the, the, the brown or black ducks at the top and the yellow duck down below, how is it that or, or what is it that that yellow duck is after? I would suggest to you that that yellow duck is after safety, significance, and belonging. And we'll we'll, we'll talk more about that in, in in just a second. And so, um, so when we think about this idea of safety, significance, and belonging, this is what what leaders have to foster in the groups that they serve. Right. So, have you ever heard this? And this is. Um, these are things that oftentimes I know that I have heard. Uh, people say that um, people are people to me. I don't see race. We're all human, aren't we? So how would so first of all, how would you address this? If you heard people saying those things, how would you address those things? Okay, so you're thinking about that. That's great. Um, what, what I would say is that these are a, a set of benign questions, right? So, so at least on the surface, they're, they're somewhat benign. Um, however, um, people are people to me. I would love to say that I, I am colorblind, that I do not recognize uh, color, um, but that's not the problem. So, so recognizing, you know, different creeds or colors of individuals, that is not problematic because we do see differences in people, right? Even the ancients saw, you know, ancient Egyptians and, and, and um, um, folks saw differences. They saw different shades and hues of human beings. So, so that's not problematic. What is problematic about seeing differences is the value that we attach to differences, right? And so if, if people don't see that I'm African-American or, or African uh, or uh, of African descent, then they miss a large part of how the world <laughs> treats me or how the world sees me. Right. And so so the, the, that becomes important. So just to say that we're all you're all human and we're all people that that's great. And you're right. That is true. However, that is not how society treats us. And oftentimes when we're working with people, that is oftentimes not how they're seen themselves. Right. Um, I, I don't see race. The, 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 that's that's problematic because we're missing a huge part of, of how other people typically see folks. Well, if we don't talk about race, it'll go away. That logic doesn't hold for anything else, right? It doesn't hold for, uh, for, for brushing our teeth. It doesn't hold for illness. It doesn't hold for, uh, for our bank account. So, so we can't say that, that race, uh, talking about race is the problem when it's, it's how we talk about race that is actually the problem. Right. And then um, aren't we all human? Yes, we are all human. We have we, we have this human universal needs, wants and desires. Th th those are universals. We want safety, significance and belonging. But how we get safety, significance and belonging is more important than uh, than just recognizing that we need those things. Right. So um, and I would imagine that we've all hungered for something. Right. We've all yearned for something. Uh, we've all uh, been in love. We've all had our hearts broken. And some of us have actually been the heartbreakers. Huh. No, OK, anyway. Right. But 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 what we know is that those things are universal. That's a universal thing. What's important for us to recognize is that um, who we've been in love with. Uh, what we've longed for, what we've yearned for, what, what has broken our heart may in fact may be very different. And so it's, it's recognizing those commonalities and differences that, that become very important um, as we as we talk about these things and not just glossing over these kind of universal 
tones um, because we could be missing important information that could actually be helpful in building relationships, right? And so there is a better way to approach those, those questions. And um, we've all heard the golden rule, right? Do unto others or treat others as, you, as you'd have them treat you, as, as you want them to do unto you. Right. So that that golden rule, what I like to suggest is that there's a platinum rule, treat others the way they want to be treated. So so what is that? What does that mean? Oh, how do I do that? Right. So if you have uh, anyone ever had a plant that they were trying to grow a house plant or garden. Right. So how do you know when the plant is not getting what it needs? In some cases, it starts to wither. In other cases, it turns yellow. Um, it, it's not as productive as it was prior, right? How do you know that? Because a plant can't talk, right? So how do you know these things? You have been watching and you've been in relationship with this plant, right? And so the same thing goes with human beings. Treat people the way they want to be treated, which means you more than likely will have to have a relationship with them. You will have to check in with them. You'll get feedback from them on, on your behavior and, and, and whatnot. Well, what if I just treated everybody the same? How does that work with your plants? What if you watered all of your plants exactly the same? So your cactus would respond exactly as your, um, as your, uh, your your ivy plant, right, or your bonsai plant, that they, they would all respond exactly the same. All of your garden uh, vegetables would respond exactly the same if you treated them all the same. No, that logic doesn't work, right? And so, so I want you to think about um, as as we're engaging with folks, how do we give people what they need um, while still trying to achieve organizational goals? So we'll stop right here. We'll come back for, for part two, and then we'll engage. Thank you.